Hello, it's me, Sam Poopoo Gaming, and today I'm going to be showing you the, how to use and install the World Edit plugin for Bucket. This is probably one of the biggest uh, plugins on Bucket and allows you to manipulate your world using uh, a wand and you can uh, create areas and it's very, very in depth. Now, some of you, I'm going to say, are going to know what world it is and you probably uh, think, oh, I won't need this tutorial. Well, actually, there are some things which even I didn't know about which are very useful and I have to go over them. Uh, so as I was looking through for this tutorial I found some reads for commands so even if you're an avid user of WorldEdit there might be something new that you didn't know and uh, hopefully I'll be able to show you these features. Okay so first thing we're going to do is select an area but before we need this we'll need a wand so the first command is slash slash wand and this will give us our wand. Now the selection mode by default is cuboid and we're going to go over different selection uh, modes but this will be the first one so what we're going to do is we're going to left click the first position so say this block here and then we can right click the second position so right click here now we've selected this keyword here and then we can manipulate this using some commands I'll go over later uh, just one command I'll just go over now we're going to go over this one depth is slash slash set and then the type so we can type in like grass but we can just type in stone. You can also type in the IDs as well. Just to give you an idea, so that's the uh, area of the stone there that we selected. And if I just uh, set that to air, you can see this is the keyword we have selected. Now to undo, we can just do undo and then uh, hit the enter and then undo again. And we can also redo and then a number as well to redo stuff and then obviously undo as well works the same. So like that. So that's how you would select a keyboard. We don't have to use the uh, wand, we can just do it by looking and typing slash pos1 and then slash pos2 and again that works the same. Oops. Well there you go, it, would, uh, it has done it but there you go. Uh, we can also do it using our crosshair, so we wanted a large area so for instance over here we do h pos1 and then we'll go over here and do h pos two and then we can uh, set these to zero and as you can see this area here has been cut out. If I just set it to one it'd be probably more evident. There you go. So that's the area we've selected. Of course it's gonna be a bit laggy because it's loading the chunks but uh, there you go that's what the area is. So let's gonna do that twice. Alright so that's how we would select it. We can also select an entire chunk by doing slash slash chunk if I just do set uh, zero and that will just uh, select the chunk you're in from bedrock to sky and as you can see I've just deleted everything in it it will take a while to load but you can see there it's doing all the lighting and stuff well you can quickly undo that just in case but that's how you select the entire chunk and then you can manipulate it how you want so that's like the main uh, sort of keyboard now we're going to show you how to uh, adjust this selection so let's let's make that a Let's actually make this a gold uh, cube. Alright, so we're going to select one point here and then select the other point here, so that's a corner. Now we can expand this uh, how we like. So at the moment, if we just set that to one, just that uh, cuboid changes. We can expand it all the way to bedrock and the sky by doing expand vert. And then we've set that to one. As you can see, it goes all the way up to uh, the sky and all the way down to bedrock. Alright, uh, I'll do it again. Alright, so now uh, we can also expand it in other ways. So we can expand it in an amount and in a direction. So let's expand it up. So if we look up, here's a nice easy way. We can expand me, uh, sorry, the direction. So we have three, and then the direction will be me. So it should be expanded three up. Let's just do it. Ex Oh, expand free up. Let's just reselect that. Expand free up. There we go. So now when we set it, uh, it's added three extra blocks to the height. And we can do that in left, right, north, south, east, or west. Uh, you can use U for up or D for down. And we can also use me, so let's just show you that here. Thanks. Uh, let's just let's reselect it because I think that's what the problem was first time. Then let's do look over here. So we do expand 
five me, set to one, and there we go, we expanded it five blocks in that direction. So that's how that works. We can also contract it as well. So we can go contract. Again, let's reselect it actually. So contract the amount, so let's say one, and then let's say the direction, so let's have D for down. And then when we set one, I can see only the bottom is selected because we've moved the region down. Okay, uh, let's do that again. And this, of course, will work in all the same directions as the other one. Finally, we have shift. So this will actually, instead of expanding it, it will do it, expand and contract it in the same way. So, if, for instance, if we shift it in this direction, so shift uh, one, well, I set two then, and then the direction me. And then we set one. As you can see, the region we selected of this keyboard has been moved to a whole two blocks to that direction there. And as you can see, it has moved there. So that's how that would work. So this is contracted it uh, to this way and expanded it to that way, if you imagine that's where it's done. OK, so that's that. Um, and of course, that will work in all directions as well. Just some extra little commands. We can well, let's just select another point here. We can get the uh, selection side by doing slash slash size, and that will tell you uh, the type of it, the two positions, the size of it, and then the cuboid distance and the number of blocks, the so 270 blocks. We can also do uh, count and then the block type, so let's do count grass, and that will tell you how many grass blocks are in there, or you can define another type, so count dirt as well, and 58. And to see all the blocks in the type of thing, you can do dist r for distribution. And then you can see that the total blocks are 270, and then how each one uh, is it. So we've got four gold blocks, which is at uh, just the bottom half of this, and that contributes to 1.481% of it. And you can see that most of it is just air, or 39%, and that's a nice breakdown. And it's quite useful if you want to see if there's any ores or something, you can select a big area and uh, see how many ores and stuff. So it's quite handy. Uh, now we're going to go over the uh, cell poly. So let's change our selection mode to poly. So now we're in our 2D polygon selector. So basically, we left click to select the first point. So let's say that's here. And then all points will be done by right clicking. So this is a 2D polygon, so it doesn't really matter what level we do it on. So let's just undo that. Right, so that's it. That's our region done. Now we just just say set one. You can see there's our polygon there. It's very uh, strange because of all the lines and stuff. But that's how it would work, and uh, that's that. And we can also expand that uh, up and down, left and right, like we can with the cuboid ones. We can also do ellipsoid by doing cell ellipsoid. Uh, I'm not sure what you'd use this for, but we left click to do the center, and then we can right click to do a a nice radius and then we can set one as you can see there it's made an ellipsoid a very thin one we, we should probably make that a little bit bigger let's just undo that and then do set one again there you go that's a better representation of the ellipsoid you can see uh, very flat and uh, we chose the center and then the outside point and that's how that would work right so let's just time day it right we've also got the cell sphere is it, would you imagine it's just a sphere? Left click, right click, and then, ooh, there we go. There's our sphere we created. And then finally, we, we have the, the cylinder. So we left click and then we right click to expand. Uh, we've, I've chosen the same point twice, well. And then we can uh, right click, say here, and right. So then when we set one. It makes a, a line, but we need to set another point, so let's say, say here. And there we go, there's our cylinder that we created. So you will have to have three points for this. I decided to do t two for some reason, and that's how you do it. And again, you can expand this vertically if you want higher things. But there's a easier tool for using cylinders, and we'll show you that. But that's if you wanted to select it. And finally, we have cell cuboid, and that just takes us back to the standard left click, right click. And this is probably what you'll be using the most, uh, most of it really. Right, so that's the selection. Now let's go over the next one, which will be 
some region operators. So I already showed you one of them, which was the set. Now I'm going to show you some other ones. So let's just show that again. So we select the two points and do set, say, six. And I chose a dodgy one. Let's choose set wall. So there we go. We can uh, set the block types in that region. So I've changed it to wall. And I changed it to saplings first time, but that's a bad idea. Well, what we can actually do, which is this one of the one of the things I found out, we can actually have percentages and settings with that. So if I select, uh, let's make this a bit bigger. So let's set that point there and that point there. And then we'll just set wall just to show you the size of it. So what we can actually do is have percentages with this area. So what we can do is go set, say, 50% wall, and then we have 50%. Uh, stone. And what that will do, it will randomly place stone and wool in this region. And there you go, that's, that's, this is one of the cool features I think about this. And of course you can do that again, and it will randomly generate it again. And we can add another one, so let's change stone to 25%. And then we can have another one, go 25%, uh, what should we have? Dirt, why not? And there we go, we've got 25% dirt, 25% uh, stone and 50% wool. And it's quite a handy feature if you want to make randomly generated terrain or you want to put ores in some places. That's how that work. would work. Okay, uh, so that's that. And again, one of the useful ones is set zero. And this will just remove all of it and turn everything to air. Okay, so we can also do some walls. So let's select another point. So select here and here. And then we're going to do slash slash walls, and then the block type says so stone. And that will create a wall uh, uh, from the size of the region while missing the floor and things. Uh, let's choose a bigger region actually. So left click here, and again, let's do that. So there you can see it's created a wall around the region. Okay, so that's quite handy if you have like a. Um, an area and you want a wall around it you can do that and again you might want to expand it upwards if you want a higher wall and with all these things you can have the 25% and the randomly generated things as well. Uh, what else we can do is the overlay. Now I'm going to actually dig down on this one just to show you how this one would work. What this will do it will overlay blocks on your selection so if I do for instance overlay grass it will place grass on blocks uh, in within this region. And notice it hasn't done these ones here. These because these is below the region, and it won't place a block because uh, there's no block underneath it. It won't place it above it. So what it's done is basically place a glass uh, grass block wherever it can uh, on this region. And it's been quite handy if you want to place like this this grass here, or like flowers and stuff, or you want to place snow. So overlay snow. It's quite handy for doing that sort of thing. Okay, and finally we have stacking, and or we also have moving as well. But let's show you stacking. So this is a very handy feature. So say we made a bridge. Let's just make a nice little bridge here. So right, so so you spent your time and effort making the bridge, as I have here. I've only made a section of it. I put some torches down as well. So we're going to select the region, and now we're going to actually move this bridge so it encompasses from here all the way over there. The way we do that is by doing stack the count, so how many of these bridge parts we want, so let's have just five, and then direction, so we're going to have me. And that will do is we'll copy this sort of region and paste it and keep pasting it five times until we'll go over there. And that's very handy again if you want to make bridges or caves or something like that. We can uh, do this. And also we can uh, ex expand it upwards as well. So if I just make it almost house like, we can do a stack, say five again, up. And there we go, we've stacked five of these bridge parts on top of each other. And uh, that's a nice way of making like towers and stuff. If you want to have a room and you want to copy and paste it above we can stack them and it will fit nicely. Just one other thing to know, it will count like things like torches and stuff so these will be placed as one above it. So this again is one of my 
favourite features of this uh, plugin. And we also have moving, so let's make another small bit. So just for wood blocks, select the region. And now this is a move command, so what we'll do is we'll move this region two blocks over here. So we'll do move to me. Again, this will uh, work with north, south, east, west, up and down. As you can see there, the uh, wood blocks have been moved two to the right, and we can move it back. And one thing to note, your region won't change as a result. So if I move and then set one, as you can see, my region hasn't moved with it. So just to let you know, um, the region doesn't move. We can also fill it by doing move the distance. So let's have three up and then the fill. So what we want to have the blocks that it's being replaced with. So let's have stone. And what will happen, it will move up and then where this was, it will place every block with stone. And this will place air as well. So if you want to move like a, something out of the way and you want to replace it with a block, that's how we do it there. Okay, so finally we have a nice smooth command. So I'm trying to find a good place to put this. Right, this this uh, area over here, it's very hilly. And it doesn't look very nice, so let's smooth it out. So left click one point, and then we're going to right click another point. And then we're going to expand it vertically. So expand that. So I'm going to fly up in the sky for this just to show you how this would work. And what you do, if you see a, a rough formation and you don't want like the way it looks, you can do slash dash smooth. And what this will do, it will try and smooth the terrain out and make it flow. It will generally make things a bit flatter. And that's how it will work. And you can also do it with smooth and then iteration. So we'll just have like 20. Smooth 20. And all that happened, it will do it 20 times in this area. So you can see now this hill here has been made much smoother, a lot less rough. I bet if I was to put like a, a rough edge like that, right? And then we go smooth 20. As you can see, it's gone straight away and been placed here and been much smoothed out. So that's quite handy if you see any rough edges and you don't like it, then uh, you can do that. And finally, we have, oh, not finally, they're not even close to how we're doing this. So let's uh, let's take this chunk. And say that someone built something here, like the horrible bridge, and we don't want it. What we can do is do slash slash regen. And what that will do, uh, it will regenerate the uh, region we're in. So that's a bad example. Let's select the. Uh, let's select two points just because. And then we'll do expand vert. And then we'll do slash slash regen. And what this will do, it will regenerate this part of the world, so it will turn it back to where uh, your grass is, and it will remove any like structures. That is uh, above the region, so it didn't remove that for some reason. But um, this will only work if you're using the same um, map as it is. The world generator has to be the same as what you're using, and the seed will be the same as well, or else it will cause uh, some slight issues. So if you've got a, a pre-made, uh, pre-generated map, then do not use this command as it will not work. Right, so lastly we have um, that's it really. Let's go over to the next commands which will be clipboards. Right, so we can actually copy and paste things. So let's create our nice uh, golden block. We'll select the two points and then we'll stand where we want to stand. So let's stand, say, here. Copy. And then what we can do, we go over here and then paste it. Slash slash paste. And this will copy our region we've selected and paste the same thing over here. We can do that as many times as we like, over and over again, and whatnot. What we can also do is cut. This is the same thing, really. It'll just leave uh, air and do that. And we can also do slash slash cut and then another block, so like a stone. So what we'll do, we'll remove that uh, thing and then we can paste that back where we like. And one thing to know, where you're standing is relative to where it is. 
so just to let you know that will make an effect right so we can also do rotation so for this I'm gonna make this look a bit different so we can see that it's been rotated right, so let's make that there that there and that there select it so first thing we want to do is copy it to the clipboard we're gonna rotate it now 180 degrees uh, you can also do 90 degrees and 270 and then we're gonna paste it and of course it's going to be behind me because we rotated it and then you can see the whole thing has been rotated 180 degrees around so you can see this this uh, gold block is on this side now and uh, this uh, wood block is now there now so that's how you rotate it we can also flip things as well by doing slash slash flip uh, and then the uh, direction so for instance we can flip it say west so w for west and then we're going to slash slash paste it and then it's going to be behind me again we can see now these this has been rotated and flipped so you can see that these these blocks are now on this side and those blocks are now on that side so that's how we can rotate and flip things at the same time and finally we have schematic so if you don't know what a schematic is a schematic is basically a file which allows you to copy like buildings or trees or your creations basically in the Minecraft world as a file and then you can send these to friends and then paste these into your world as well so to, to save one we can do shem save and then the uh, the file name so let's say block oh I forgot the format so slash slash shem save now the format so let's uh, what should we have for the format we'll just have uh, MCE let's have MCE and then the file name so block and there we are we save this as a um, schematic and then we can load this schematic back into our world by doing shem load of MCE block and then we've loaded it into our clipboard we do slash slash paste and there we are there's our new block which we copied from earlier pasted into the world uh, there is a file I'll show you when we do the configuration where all these semantics are saved and finally when we want to clear the clipboard we can do clear clipboard and then we can't we can no longer paste because we have nothing copied Okay, so there we go. Um, just to let you know, the available formats are MC Edit and MCE. Uh, so you've got MCE and MC Edit. So it's up to your preference whether or not you're going to edit it in an editor or stuff. Right, so that's all the clipboard stuff. Now we're going to go over generation. So this is where I was talking about a better way of doing a keyboard or a cylinder. So we're going to select the point, I think these ones work yeah, where I selected the point and then we do slash slash psi wow, this is the cylinder the block, so we'll have stone the radius of the cylinder, so let's say 5 and then the height, so 10 and then we've stuck into it now of course we can no longer get out so let's just log in and log out again and there we go, there's our cylinder that we created. Now this will probably do it from where you're standing, maybe. Uh, let's just try that again. Oops. Cylinder stand 510. No, it, yeah, it definitely does it where you're standing. So that's the one thing to know, you might get stuck and you have to reload to get out of it. But we want to make a uh, hollow cylinder. We just do the same thing but with H in front of it. So let's make it out of sponge this time, just to make a difference. And there we go, we made a hollow cinder, hollow, hollow cinder out of sponge. Now I made it slightly to the right, I would have to move that uh, to the right there. But uh, or to the left. So that's how you make a hollow one. This is the same cylinder, same size, just hollow. Okay, uh, we can also make elliptical cylinders and uh, ellipses by uh, specifying other stuff so let's go over here we do slash slash 
cylinder, the block, so let's have stone again. The radius east and west, so let's have five. Right, let's have two and then seven, just so we can see the differences. And then the, that, well, that will be the radius east-west and then the radius north-west. And then we have the height, so let's have five. And uh, let's relog, just so we can see our ellipsoid, our ellipse. And there we go, we can see our ellipse. So this is just uh, basically a cuboid, a cuboid, a cylinder, but it slightly has different radius northwest and then southwest. So that how that's how that would work. Okay, so now we also have spheres. So we have slash slash sphere, the block type. Well, let's have uh, let's go for something. Let's go for iron ore, the radius. So let's have four. And then whether or not we want it raised or not. So we can either have yes or no. So if so, let's have yes. And then we'll have to log out. So by default, the center of the sphere will be the block above the one you're standing on. But if we say yes, if we don't have it raised, sphere. Let's go for gold or really and then we'll have no. I actually did it before tonight. Let's relog. As you can see there, the uh, sphere hasn't been raised, and so it's done it from my point where I'm standing. But this one has been raised by the radius, so it does it where it's been placed. And again, like the system, there we can do a hollow sphere by doing H sphere, the block, so let's have glass, the radius 4, and then we'll have this one raised. And there we go, we're now in a hollow sphere, let's just break ourselves out. And there we go, we can see that, uh, what's that? why did I do it in the glass, I don't know, but you can kind of see there, that is a sphere and it's hollow, and we can put water and stuff in that when we want. And then we can make some ellipsoids, uh, a similar way to what we did with the, uh, the uh, cylinders, being the elliptical cylinders. We can do slash slash sphere blocks. So let's have uh, I'm running out of blocks. There's so many blocks, and I just can't think of any. Let's have a log. And the radius and the radius and the radius are all separated by uh, commas. And this is the north south radii, the up down radii, and the east west radii. So let's have two, five, nine, and then whether or not we want it raised or not. So let's have yes. And there we go, there's our ellipsoid there. You can see it's similar to the uh, elliptical cylinder. However, there is a radius uh, up and down which has been added. So when you uh, are good at these commands, you'll be able to create cool things with them. This might be handy if you wanted to make like a balloon for a hot air balloon or something. You can make it slightly elliptic. Okay, so we also have forest trim. So we'll do slash forest. Uh, the size, so let's have 10. The type, so whether or not we want trees or stuff, so we'll have there's a list of tree types you can use, uh, which are like regular, big, tall, pine, uh, but we're just going to go for tree for now. And then we have the density as well, so we'll have a nice high density of about 0.9. And of course, it didn't create any, so what we'll do instead of having uh, a density, we'll just have a forest gen 10 and there we go, it's created a 10 by 10 square where we're standing and filled it with um, uh, trees and stuff now I had a 0.5% thing that probably wasn't a good idea Let's, just, just to show you the density just type. cannot type no, not so fast right, so We'll have a 50% density, and as you can see, that is much, much more dense than the uh, the one we had earlier. So I couldn't even get out. So that's the uh, default density, and this is the 50% density. If you want to make it a smaller percentage of density, if you don't want as many trees, then put in a, a nice small value, say like one, and there you go, you've got one tree. Two, you've got six trees. 
three, we got five trees. And of course it'd be random and sometimes we might not place the trees 100% of the time, but that's how it would work. Uh, we also got pumpkins. So yeah, these are pumpkin patches, so we can make a five by five pumpkin patch by doing pumpkins five. And then we go, we can see there's been pumpkins and two of them been created. And let's just make up, let's make up my dig 50. There we go, pumpkin patches everywhere. Because that's a 50 by, oh, what did I do? Yeah, 50 by 50 area and 75 pumpkin patches have been created. So I guess that could be quite cool for Halloween or something. Uh, you could always create uh, what you like. Okay, so finally we have arbitrary shapes. Oh, I've actually, no, well we have pyramids, sorry. Let's just go over that because I skipped it. Pyramids, nice and easy. I'll just show you a hollow pyramid and the pyramid itself is just the same but full. You just don't put the H there, H there you just put pyramid. The block type, so let's have glass and then the size of it, so this is be high, how high it is and how much the length is, so let's have a nice big 9 one. And there we go, there's the uh, pyramid we've created. From the point where it's standing it is 9 high, and so it will create uh, glass and that, and we can change that. And we can also make it uh, solid by not having the H there. Okay, and then as I had a sneak preview at, arbitrary shapes. So this will allow us to generate any shape that has been described by a mathematical formula. Now I didn't actually know about this uh, command until uh, very recently and it is very very good if you know what you're doing. There are some examples on the uh, wiki which I'll of course link you to. I'm going to show you some of them now. So these will lag our server up a bit so I'm going to do the ones that don't as much. So let's do a sine wave. So first of all, let's uh, select a region. So this point here, this point here. Expand it vertically, and we'll get rid of. Ooh, we'll get rid of everything. So now we're going to make a sine wave in this region here. So what we need to do is do slash slash g for or generate. We then have slash h and then the block type, so let's have stone actually let's have go gold block and then we want the mathematical formula which would be sine and the art sample they've got here is sine times x times 5 is uh, it's 5 by 2 is less than y and there we go, we've created a massive sine curve as you can see it starts from here and goes up to 1, down and uh, there we go, so that's the sine curve it has created. Uh, there we go. And of course you can have uh, different ones as well, so let's have a circular hyperloid. And that's a nice big one, and again that's created it in the region we had already. And that, that could be quite useful for trees and stuff, and there is a hollow tree thing as well. So if you know what you're doing, you can create quite cool structures using a mathematical formula. Uh, but I'll just show you one extra one, the rainbow egg. I don't want my computer to lag too much. That's a nice small one. Uh, let's, uh, you can see it's there, but uh, it's not the best. Let's uh, get two points. Expand up. Uh, expand plenty up. The, the egg in there, and then you can see there. There's the rainbow egg they created. Well, that's the example. So there you go. That's how it would work. Uh, quite cool, um, and uh, I'm sure some people will be able to have a lot of good fun with that one. I'm sure. Right. So that's the generation. We have the final thing, which are utilities. So. First of all, let's go over here. Oh, this is a nice pool. What we can do is fill things. So this this here water, we want it to be filled up. So what we can do is do slash slash fill the block. So water, the radius. So let's have 20, which is more than enough. And hit enter, and then we go. We fill this pool with water, and we also do slash slash drain, and then the radius 20 again. 
and that will drain the pool of water. So again, you can do this with lava. Uh, we can do it with water. I believe you can do it with any uh, block type, really. Yeah, it should be able to do it with any block type. So let's have, for instance, sponge. And there we go. We filled it with sponge. So that's going to be quite handy if you've got like a hollow thing and you want to fill it with something. And that's how that would work. Okay. Um, so we've shown you draining and filling. We've also got fixing water. So I'm fixing lava. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mess up this lava. Uh, lava. I'm going to mess up this water. So okay, set zero. As you can see, this water is slightly messed up now. We don't want it like this. It's a bit not really nice to see. What we can do is go next to it and go fix water and then the radius. So five should be enough. As you can see, it will nicely fix the water uh, there, so we don't have that horrible thing. And um, we can do that as well by doing fix lava and then the radius uh, as an alternative to fix water. Okay, so that's that. Uh, we can also edit nearby blocks. So here we have a uh, desert. What we can do is do remove above. I can type it in the size. So uh, this is the size parameter indicates the size of the cuboid to remove. Um, so let's say five, and then the height. So let's have five again. But there's no blocks above me, so let's do remove below. And then what that'll do, it'll just remove the uh, size of the blocks in the cuboid below you for a certain depth. So 5 by 5, and then the depth down. And if I put some blocks above me now, hopefully I'll be able to show you the remove above, and then you go, the uh, blocks above me have been removed. But that's not the most useful command. I'm going to show you a more useful one, which is the remove near the block type. So let's have cactus and then the size so 20, and that's the radius. You can see all the cactuses in the nearby 20 radius have been removed. So I do that, they come back. So this would be quite helpful if you want to remove like a, a lava block. Let's do stone just just to show you as an example. As you can see there, all this stone has been removed and we can easily see all the ores and all the uh, sandstone and lots of the sand has fallen down. So that's how you would remove the or some stone and that's made a horrible me mess. And there we go, we undid it. Now one thing to do, sand and stuff like that will not be un undo, undid. Yeah, I'm going to go for undid when uh, you undo stuff like that. So just just note that. So if you're going to do doing stuff with sand, uh, it will not be placed back up because it only does the region it affects. We also do replace near. So oh, why am I doing double slash replace near the size? So let's have five. The replace type. So sand. I replace with cell sand. And this will just replace. I'll do cell sand. Let's have grass then. And this will replace uh, the area around you. Uh, with the size we specified, we will replace all the block types of sand and we will replace them with the block type we specified, which is grass. Uh, and that's how you do that. So that can be quite useful. You want to remove some lava. Just do replace near size 20 or lava to zero and stuff like that. We can also do snowfall. Let's go near the water for this. So we do slash snow and then the uh, radius. So slash snow and then say 5 and that would make a radius around us just to have snowfall on it so all ice, not all ice, all water will turn to ice and then uh, anything with land will be placed at snow upon if it can. We can also simulate grass growth as well by going uh, slash green and then the radius so slash green go for 5 again I need to do it away from grass, I know. Yeah, so that will work on dirt and things. So let's just put some of that down. 
There we go. Right, so there we go. We can if it will just uh, simulate the grass growth and just cause uh, all the dirt to be turned to grass. We also have Thor, not as in Thor the God Thor, as in we had a Thor or something. Oh, the Thor, Thor. Strange. Well, there we go. Thor, Thor. <laughs> I'm amused myself. Right, Thor, and then the radius, so five, and that will just cause the opposite of basically the snowfall. Uh, it's reverse of snow effectively and it will cause all the ice to melt into water and then any snow to disappear and finally or well not finally we still got loads to go so thanks for sticking with us uh, for this long we can do butcher so butcher and then the radius so let's say that 20 and all animals or, or mobs will be killed now these sheep haven't died yet so what we can do is do butcher slash a for kill friendly animals 20 and that will kill all friendly animals in the uh, radius slash a is for friendly animals slash n for npcs such as villagers and p is for pets so like tame walls and stuff okay uh, one nice utility command which we'll be using a lot if you uh, I don't know have problems with uh, fire and things will be x so let's start a fire so these trees over here, I don't like them. I'm a griefer. I'm gonna set them alight. All right. Uh, sometimes it's called lag on the server, so you might want to get rid of it. And the way you do that, we're doing slash x, and then the radius, so like uh, 50 or 40, and that will cause any fires to just be put out. So you can alternatively do remove near fire and then the radius. But uh, this is effectively just a shortcut to that, so slash x. And you do slash x for the whole entire loaded uh, world. Right, so that's that. We can do now some uh, chunk tools. This is not the most exciting one, so it shouldn't take very long. Do slash chunk info. This will tell you what chunk you're in, it'll tell you the format and then the MC region. And do list chunks. So you can see there it will list all the chunks. We can also delete chunks as well by doing del chunks. So because we doesn't support the MC region format, uh, that's actually been an outdated uh, command. So I've just shown you an outdated command. Well, hey, that doesn't work anymore basically. But uh, there is a shell script, I believe. If you ever want to delete chunks, I think. so not very exciting. The chunks we'll just we'll quickly go over those. Right, so now on the next one, which is super pickaxe. So let's whack out a pickaxe. And what we'll do? Do slash slash, and that will cause a super pickaxe to enable. Now let's just change to game mode zero. And what this will do is basically make us be in game mode uh, one, where we can one hit blocks. And it will cause them to drop as well. So there you go. I can dig. Just one hit every block. And uh, quite useful. You might want to give that to like a, a VIPs, I guess, if you wanted to. Right, so we also got some tools. So the first tool will be tree. So do slash tree. And that will cause the. Uh, Change back to game mode one. This will cause the tree tool to be bound to the item you're holding. At the moment, I'm holding, holding a uh, diamond pickaxe. So whenever I right-click, a tree will be spawned. There we go. Trees everywhere. You can also do slash none to turn it off, and then we do tree and then type. So let's have redwood. There we go, we've produced a redwood tree as opposed to a normal tree. Okay. So we've also got a floating tree remover by doing del tree. So now when we uh, right click the tree which is floating, so for instance, let's drill it the bottom lot, it will remove the whole tree. So if you've got like a person that's just digging the bottom blocks, 
can easily just remove the whole tree just by right clicking. And then we've got the block repeater by doing rep L and then the block type. So for instance, uh, let's have diamond block. And then we right click, it will replace the uh, block we right clicked with diamond. So it's kind of like painting, I guess you would uh, say it's very close to painting. So uh, that's that, how that works. Uh, and then again, we do a slash none to turn it off. We can also do a long range build by doing LR build, left click, and then the right click. So these are the blocks that we place if we right click and, uh, and whatnot. So let's have, what should we have? Fence and uh, this what else we have. Mm, I'm sorry, this is taking long. Plank. So now we're on the long range building tool. So when we left click, as you can see now, it replace, replaces uh, fences. And then when we right click, it will place wood. So as you can see, I can make a small little fence thing from long range. And I can also, one well, idea is just do L R build air and then not have like right click uh, tree, log. When I left click, I effectively dig. So I can dig from a distance. And then I right click, I can uh, place uh, the logs. So there we go, I've been placing logs, and that should make a cool effect. There we go. So that's how that works. I can do long range build. I've also got long range run as well by doing far one. And uh, when, when we left click and right click, this is kind of like the uh, the H pods and stuff. It will effectively just uh, allow us to make a region selection by via distance, which is quite good. Cycler. So this will just cycle the data of blocks. So let's uh, just here's a sand block. We right click it. Huh. Oh. Well, let's have this one then. We right click it. Oh. Maybe it means stuff like sapling. So let's have that. Right click it. There we go. So it's, I don't, I'm not sure why it works on stuff like data. Then. Maybe it hasn't been updated yet. But as you can see there, when you right click it, it will change the data value. So this will work with. Um, no, it won't work with stuff like that. It mainly works on saplings, I guess. Um, and also wall and stuff, it should work on. Apparently, there we go. You can cycle through them all. Uh, I guess in an update, data values like that should be updated. Go slash slash info 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 info. Now, when I right click things, I can see the ID, the location, the name of it, and any data value it have in it. So let's try this. So you can see there. It'll tell us the it's 35, which is the ID wall. The ID and the, the color actually tell us as well. And there we go, sapling as well. Tell us the uh, data value there of one. And then we got flood fill. The pattern, so let's just have stone and then the range of 20. Uh, floor fill. Flood fill. Maximum range 5. Sorry about that. So starting from the uh, block that is right click, the, f the flood field will try to go through connected blocks as far as possible. So let's right click the sand. As you can see there, all the sand blocks near it have been changed. If I was to right click the sand stone, the sand stone has been changed, but this uh, dirt has been left intact as a result. So it basically feels near in the radius that you've specified and trying to spread out basically without affecting every block. Right, so finally we have the brush tools. This is the last thing we'll be going over. Uh, so this is very similar to Voxel Sniper if you ever uh, used that. Uh, so we're going to do Brush Sphere. Let's just use a different item just for the sake of it. A wooden sword. Brush Sphere. And then we can have the H flag if we want to be hollow or not. So let's have a hollow one. The block type, so let's have 
stone and then the radius 5 or 4 and then when we uh, right click we can create hollow spheres from a distance there we go and it has to be right click and then we can also do cylinders as well by doing brush or actually BR is a nice simple way cylinder hollow uh, we'll have glass 2 and height of 3 and we can make cylinders from a distance by right, right clicking everywhere so there you go, that's how you make things and again we can do clipboards as well by doing things like BR uh, clipboard but uh, we can uh, copy things first so let's just let's just copy uh, just have this slash copy and then when we should right click oops so again we are uh, clipboard and then when we uh, right click it will paste the shape where we copied from a distance so we can almost make a nice little road here which is quite handy We've also got the brush, the smooth brush as well, by doing brush, smooth. Uh, the end flag will restrict the natural terrain only, so we'll turn that off. And the size, so say this is like a bit to be like 10. And it's ration, so 10 again. So we'll have 5 then. And then we can uh, right click. And you can see there it will try to smooth the terrain in from a distance, so it's quite handy. You can see that's working quite well here. We had a nice harsh edge, and we managed to smooth it out. So that's how that would work, uh, and that's it really. We can change the size of our brush as well by doing slash size, and then I say six, but uh, the maximum is five for most brushes. But you can change that to what you like. And uh, that's it. So that's all I would say for the uh, um, the uh, the in-game side. Really, it's been a long one, but uh, as you can see, there are lots of commands to go over. And hopefully, you found out something new. Uh, I'm going to be going over the config uh, next. So see you for that then. So, ta-ra! This has been Sam for Full Gaming signing out. Hello, we're now going to go over the configuration for the World Edit plugin. So, link will of course be in the description. You're going to want to hit the download here, and then download again, and you should get a .zip file. It's quite a bit larger than standard plugins, and we're going to drag and drop the contents of this file into our plugins directory. So it's just finishing off now. Right, so. The main thing we're interested in is the world edit and the craft scripts. And just drag and drop those into your plugin directory. And I've already done that, so I'm not going to copy. Okay. Uh, obviously, you read the license and the uh, readme and stuff, but uh, I'll leave you to do that. So, when you load the server up, oops, when you load the server up, hopefully you'll see, um, where we go, world edit, loading world edit, version and then the version, and then enabling it here. So hopefully that's all okay. And then we're going to go to plugins, world edit. This should be created, and there should be three, uh, well, one directory and two files. Uh, the schematics is where all the schematics you can place for loading and saving. If you remember, in the game we made a schematic called block, and here we can see there's our block schematic, and we can open that in a world editor, and we can actually modify that to how we want, and then uh, we can add more there, or delete them, and such like. World edit log. Now this is just a log of what's happening with world edit. As you can see there, it's just disabling it. Nothing interesting there. But uh, of course, when you're using it, that will uh, go up some more. But we're more mainly interested in, in the config.yml. So I'm going to open it up in, uh, say, Notepad++. Right. So let's begin. So limits. These are the maximum now number of blocks that can be changed. So if you don't want uh, such large areas to be changed then you can actually have a limit of the blocks. Uh, minus one indicates that there is no limit on the uh, 
one. So you've got the default there and the maximum block change. Uh, so if it scores a lot of lag and people are making a lot of changes, then you might want to set a, a limit on this. Uh, for those commands that require a radius, for instance, like the remove near and stuff, you can also define a max radius. So again, minus one means uh, infinite radius. Well, there's no there's no limit. Uh, max super pickaxe size, so you can change the size of the super pickaxe. Uh, and then the brush size again. These are both five. So I was saying in game five is the maximum. If you ever want to increase this, you can increase that there. And finally, we have the disallow blocks. So you've got the uh, water and whatnot. So these are all the IDs for the blocks and stuff that are disallowed. Okay, we also got use inventory. So this is off by default. You can set that to true or false to use the inventory. And then you can also override this by using a permission or your op. And then if you want people to override that, then you can set that to true. Uh, login. So the uh, file wallet log, log didn't have maps in it. We can actually log the commands to set that to true, and then you can see what your players have been using. And if there's someone's griefing, then you can easily find out who did it. Uh, super pickaxe, whether or not you want it to drop the uh, items, that can set that to true or false. And then the many drop items again, you can set that to true or false. Uh, snapshots directory, this is where you can define a directory or where you're going to place the snapshots when you're uh, wanting to back up and stuff. Navigation one, we'd actually go over this, but it's nice and easy. All you do is have the compass, and you can left click and right click to teleport uh, for where, where you're looking effectively. You might want to try that out, and by default it's a compass, but you can change the item ID there. And then the maximum distance they can travel. I pretty much always in increase this, because sometimes I don't like the fact that it's always too far. So I normally increase this. And then you've got the scripting here, so you can define the directory cross scripts. So if you didn't want the default one there, uh, you can have that there, and then the timeout it will take, uh, so 3,000 there, if the uh, script doesn't, you know, doesn't work. Uh, the saving and loading of schematics will have the directory schematics, so you can change that there, as the that default. And then you have the history, so the size of the history and the, how long it takes to expire. So this is what undoing and redoing and stuff, and that's how long. Uh, butcher. So the butcher default radius is minus one. So you're just doing slash butcher and you just want to butcher all of them without a radius. That's the default radius. So you can change that there. The wand item by default is uh, the wooden axe. If you've got a conflicting plugin where you want to actually use the wooden axes to chop wood, a good idea would be to change this to like a stick or say a blazer or something like that. Okay, and no double slash. So some of the commands require a double slash. This is just to stop it from conflicting with other uh, plugins, I believe. So if you don't want to do that, you can set that to true. Uh, no op permissions, so you can set that to true if you don't want ops. Uh, no op permissions. And then finally, debug true or false. You're generally not going to want to debug it unless you are an uh, avid user of Wada and you're okay, developing for it or making small changes. Uh, so you're, if you're watching this, you probably won't need to change that. So that's the configuration, uh, and that's really the whole of Wilder. It's been a very long tutorial. It's one of the uh, most downloaded plugins, if not the most downloaded plugin on Bucket ever, uh, just because it's so big and allows you to edit the last things. And when you become really good at it, lots of the uh, builders will use it uh, to develop very nice things, and uh, it's a great plugin. Been around since the uh, early days, really. So, thanks for watching. It's been me, Sam with Whoop Gaming. Whoop Gaming, I said that twice now. Signing out. Thank you.